Hey, welcome back to Retro Tech. Today I've got a new monitor in the shop. That's the Sony PVM 14 M2U. I got this monitor on a discount. It was originally owned locally by a video production person and he never officially serviced the unit after buying it. So it does have some screen issues. I was well aware of that in buying it. It wasn't shipped to me. It was delivered here straight to my shop. Now to get things started, we're going to turn the power on and put some RGB and a video game on there just to see what our screen looks like to begin with. So there are a few issues on this screen. The first is that it's stretched out. Now I've tried to make some adjustments to this initially when I first got it and it's not making the adjustments. So when you try to go into the submenu and adjust things and you're not seeing any kind of adjustment on your geometry, that's generally meaning that your capacitors are failing on your geometry part of your main board. So the picture is extremely overscanned. Let's try to underscan it with the underscan button and see that's underscanning us vertically but not horizontally. So our horizontal controls are failing. I did turn down the contrast and the brightness just a touch and let's see if we can have see what red green blue white so our, our colors are extremely off this is too much red in our white so we'll need to turn down the red once we get it recapped too it does show each color which is good that means that the color gun is firing properly these type of screen issues are generally related to capacitors that have gone bad on the geometry lines. So I'm going to change out those capacitors and see if that helps my screen look any better. First thing I need to do is remove my shell for this PVM. So I'm going to go ahead and take the screws out and remove the shell first. Now after I've removed all 10 screws, I simply pull back on the PVM shell towards me and it slides right out of place. Ah, everything looks normal inside here for a Sony PVM. Just a lot of dust and really needs to be cleaned up. But I don't notice anything extremely off about it to begin with. So now it's time to discharge this PVM. I'm going to link to a video that I made a long time ago explaining uh, just how to discharge a CRT and why it's so important. But this is pretty much how you do it. After you've removed the cap and get it out of the way, always go back with your screwdriver and tap that little anode ring. It's the metal part on the back of the tube. And you'll also want to tap the back of the suction cup where the two metal prongs are. Make sure there's no electricity still built up on those prongs. And once you've discharged it, you can go and safely take all your boards out, starting with your video input board. Remove that first and unplug it. Now remember when it comes to these plugs and PVMs, they are all different shapes, and a lot of times they're also different colors. So it's not as difficult to remember where they plug back into. My main chassis or A board will slip right on out and now we can give it a closer inspection. First thing I'm looking for is any kind of bulging capacitors or maybe any that have leaked or split open or anything. I don't see anything like that, but these are the capacitors we're going to be changing right around this heat sink and these other heat sinks. And then there are a couple more caps that will change right around this chip down here. And that's all part of our geometry controls. Well, I have my board here. I was just about to remove the capacitors. 
I flipped it over and I noticed a number of custom modifications, I guess you could call it, to this particular uh, PVM. Let me show you the three that I noticed right away. Uh, I have no idea why these are in here. And it's concerning to me that they may be affecting my color. But it's hard to tell sometimes. You get in these old machines and some yo-yo tech has come in here before and done a halfway repair and now we're stuck 20 years later trying to figure out what he did here's our first one it's a different type of capacitor but here's a capacitor that's been installed here this is another strange capacitor being added uh, over here and then here's the third and final customization I'm not sure what's going on here but this one really looks bad I'm just going to take a lot of extra time to carefully remove these capacitors. Remember this is a double sided printed circuit board and there are components on both sides and you could easily heat up the wrong component and damage something else, which I don't want to do when I'm trying to get in here and actually fix the monitor. And so here we have all of the old capacitors that I just removed. None of them appear to be leaking or failed in any way. I'm going to go back now and clean off the old pads with isopropyl alcohol right in this area. I want to make sure there's no residue left behind or anything that could cause any trouble for my solder bond. Now here's a new cap kit. These are the cap kits that I've designed personally. If you take a closer look here, you'll see they're all Nishikone, or however you say that. You know, those high-end, high-quality capacitors that you want to use uh, when you're repairing these old electronics. Now I'm going to start soldering in my new capacitors, and I'm going to be using some new flux that I bought. And this is some paste-style flux, and you take some kind of applicator and just wipe it on the end of the bond where you want to put your fresh solder. So I've done that here, and I'm going to come in with some fresh solder and just hit it right on the hot spot there when I heat up that pad and that leg of that capacitor. It flows wonderfully with that new solder. And here's another way to do it. You can not trim the legs of your capacitors till after you solder them into place. I just find that to be a little bit more difficult to get the solder joint to bond right away. So for me, I like to come in and trim these legs and then try to solder it into place. And I trim them after I put them through the holes. But I'll show you what I mean on this second point here. If I go ahead and trim it and then come back in and solder it, it, uh, it seems to bond a little bit easier because there's less surface area to heat up. Now you don't have to heat up the whole leg of the capacitor to get the solder to flow over and bond with the pad. Either one of these ways is fine. Just make sure that you've got a full bond there and there's no breaks in the solder. I replaced all the capacitors that were in the geometry cap kit for this board, but I just want to let you know that this is the first time I've been using this alpha rosin paste flux, and this stuff works wonderfully. So I'm going to put a link to this below because I think it would really help you if you're trying to solder and you've not used flux yet. Try this. It sticks in place as you saw in my little demo there. The flux does leave behind a little bit of residue, so I'm going to go now and clean it off with some alcohol, and then I'll reassemble the monitor and we'll fire it up and see if our screen looks any better than it did before. After I clean the board, I need to refit it back in its plastic frame, and I'm going to do this extra carefully because this old 25 plus year plastic is kind of brittle and it can break easily if you try to be too forceful with it. 
It's just a matter of screwing in uh, three or four screws here on the main board to attach it to this little slide plate. And that slide plate is helpful because, again, it just helps you slide and guide this whole tray set up right back into the bottom of the monitor. Once I have the tray in place, I don't slide it forward completely. I leave it a little bit out so I can slip all the connectors back into place. And then one of the last connectors I'm going to connect is my anode cap. I'm just going to slip it back in there, make sure it's nice and in place, and then I will twist it around and make sure the cable's hooked back into this safety cable holder. All right, I was getting ready to install the backboard again, and I noticed this one was slightly different than two. It also has a jumper wire soldered in here, so who knows what the heck is going on here. So many weird modifications. Let's just hope that's not hurting our picture quality, but I just noticed that putting this together. Now I just need to re reassemble this monitor and test it out, but I'm very uh, disheartened to see so many different weird modifications. Again, I've worked on PVMs a lot, and I've not seen any little jumpers like this ever on a 14M or 14L or any of the newer 14-inch models. I have seen these kind of jumpers before on older PVMs, like 2030s, for example, but those are generally uh, ones that have come from the 80s and really early 90s, not these mid to late 90s models. All right, now here's the big moment. Time to put some power on this screen and let's see what happens. Oh, and unfortunately, I'm still seeing the same issues. I don't see an improvement, and after I play with the sub menu, <laughs> I'm not getting any kind of horizontal screen controls. So this problem is way deeper than just the capacitors in the geometry area. Again, I'm not seeing really any difference on this performance in this sub menu. It's still way over scanned and pretty much unusable. This problem is way deeper than just the geometry capacitors. I thought we might get some screen reaction on our horizontal controls but I still get nothing. It's kind of frustrating because again, you've got a whole lot of really just terrible job done by whoever tried to service this before, put a bunch of really bad jumpers and um, things that just aren't safe and it's really not the right way to repair things. So whoever did that, I mean, they've pretty much made it to where I, it might be impossible for me to fix these boards. The only thing I can see doing is I'm gonna start removing some of those things that they put in place and then maybe I'll put it back together and see if that has any difference on the screen. And here's the first little silly whatever modification that I'm just going to get rid of. Again, whatever happens, happens, but I'm not, uh, again, sure why in the world anybody would have these diodes or whatever they are, resistors put in here. Um, I just don't see what they could even be doing. So let's pull it up. It looks like they're just tied in unison. And soldered maybe to a couple junction points here, but we're rip ripping them out. See, okay, solder point right here, and then a solder point on this right there. Okay, let's go ahead and power this thing back up without that one part installed and just see what happens. Still, so there's definitely a reason it was there because look lines on here red and green lines what a bunch of rubbish so this board's got some serious problems serious problems there's definitely a reason it was there but um, unfortunately that's going to be probably too difficult to diagnose with all the problems that are supposedly in this monitor. Basically, the A board is garbage. All right, well, there you have it. I will be using this for parts, and just let that be a little bit of a cautionary tale to you, you that sometimes it's way more than capacitors. These old monitors may have been rigged up at some point in their life to just function and then uh, never have serious repairs done to them like this one appears to be and it also just has a lot of problems. But hey, thanks again for watching today. Please leave a like, or if you have a comment or question, leave that below, and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.